Hi, I'm Bonnie, and this is another one of our member highlight series. Uh, today, I want you to meet Danny Anderson. Danny, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Good to have you. Uh, you want to start out with just telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm I'm Danny Anderson, like you said. I live in uh, in Denmark, and uh, I've been coding approximately since I was uh, nine years old. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm married to Charlotte, and I have uh, two kids, two teenagers. So that's a uh, awesome adventure. <laughs> wow. Um, and work-wise, I basically do everything I do uh, from home mostly, unless it's it's meetings, which we can't do much of at the time. But uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. I haven't known you very long. I didn't know you had two teenagers. That's why you get along so well with Samantha. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's jump right in. First question. Did you ever come across a time when you didn't think that you were cut out to be a developer? Probably not because you started pretty young, huh? Was it easy for you? No, it wasn't no. easy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. No, I, uh, I, I think I, I just fell in love with coding because uh, a good friend who was two years older than me he got a computer before me, so I I always uh, felt, uh, you know, less than good because <laughs> he was so amazing. He still is, and uh, and you know, so I I never felt good enough uh, to to be a coder basically. But I always loved it, and I couldn't help myself. So I, I remember I the relate. first time I did like uh, Hello World. I was so proud. I called my mom. I said, "Look, mom, what I made the computer do!" You know, so it was so exciting. So. Yeah, but towards feeling like I could do it, no, I never really did. I can relate very much. <laughs> uh, okay, did anyone help you in a significant way? Probably the one who started ahead of you, huh? What was his name? Anders. Anders, and you're still friends with Anders? Yeah, very good friends. Um, uh, he lives in Shout out to Anders. Yeah, absolutely. He lives in Switzerland now, actually. So. Yeah, but yeah, he did help me me a lot, you know, to to get involved and to see how things were going. And and other than that, uh, there's a lot of the online things that that helped me incredibly, you know, pro Pluralsight and Udemy and and all of that, you know, to be able to learn, especially when I've been learning new technology, it's been incredibly helpful. And I, I got to say, the course that you are running with the architecture has been amazing. Not just for the content, but for the office hours as well, and with the connection with other people, I, I find that incredibly helpful. Because sometimes you see so much stuff online, but you don't really get to connect with the people. And just sometimes it's enough just to hear other people are struggling with the same things. It's like, thank God, I'm not, the, I'm not alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so that's very. Somebody helpful. told me a long time ago, if you want to help someone, rather than telling them what they need, ask them what they need, and then. And, and I really believe that. And I think that's really, and that's really how I put that course together. And that's why we do one hour of content and then two hours of answering questions and discussion, because really I want to know what people are working on. And I think it's, it's been a great format. So, but it was really, it's really heartwarming for me to hear you say that. So thank you. I'm really glad that, that you've been enjoying the course. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, next question. What do you listen to when you code? Do you have like a programming playlist? Uh, yes, I have. I have several. Um, if I really need to, if I have a difficult time getting started, I, I listen to Focus at Will. So this is a, a great app, and it's there's no there's no uh, vocals in it. So I, I absolutely love that, and I have uh, different programs in that that you can select from different programs. So I, I usually am on on a Focus Bar or Alpha Chill. You know, it's it, but. Anyways, it's the point is there's no vocal, so so your concentration is is very good listening to that. Other than that, I listen to uh, Leonard Cohen, uh, Blue October. I I like that, so it's very different genres, but I I like it. I love it. Okay, uh, here's one. What do you do? You have any strategies to help you focus on days when you're struggling with that? If you're working on something tedious or something that's not that interesting or or difficult. Uh, do you have any strategies that help you get through those days? Yeah, I mean, focus at will. <laughs> it's again really good. So I put that on, and then it's like I I use that specifically for focus. So it's I can kind of turn it on, and then I turn my focus on as well. So that's that works very well when I get into it. But other than that, it's about me having a, a plan that's helpful as well. So I know now I got to do exactly this. And nothing else, and I kind of switch my brain off to anything else 
and just focus on that. And then I turn off all notifications of everywhere. So super helpful. I actually, actually, I even have a sign outside my door that I can turn on that says code mode. So the family knows don't disturb. Wow. That's very advanced. I like <laughs> Pomodoro's too. I have a little timer that I set for like 25 minutes. And then every 25 minutes, I'm supposed to get up and stretch my legs. And then I only have to focus for 25 minutes. And that actually helped me a lot too. Yep. Uh, Cause I used to struggle with that. I used to, sometimes I would get stuck on something and then I would just stay there longer until my brain is like completely, and it just got worse and worse. So I had to, yeah. to take breaks. Sleeping is a good strategy sometimes as well. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everything's easier in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Angular. What's your experience with Angular? Well, I got started around Angular too, you know, when that uh, sort of came out and, and I was just uh, eating up uh, Udemy co courses with, um, Maximilian, what's his name? Well, Maximilian Swartz, I think. Well, I'm not sure. But anyways, mm -hmm. I was listening uh, or seeing a lot of his courses, actually. I have a treadmill in the basement. So I go to the treadmill, and then I have the video in front of me so I can run while I watch Angular courses. So wow. uh, I, before that, I, I've, I've done a lot of other development stuff, but not Angular. So I was really getting into learning Angular and did that through some of those uh, Udemy courses. And, and I, I fell in love with it. You know, I, I really like it. I do some uh, view as well, not that much. Um, but I, I, I really am in, in love with, uh, with Angular, for sure. Me too. Yeah. I actually started with uh, early AngularJS. And I really loved it because it offered us some functionality that we didn't have any other way back then with that two-way data binding. I was like, oh my goodness, you had me at ng-repeat. <laughs> but uh, it was much more difficult to learn back then because we really we didn't have all those courses and it was it was a lot more confusing. And Angular 2, when it came out, was so much cleaner and the TypeScript is just beautiful. And because there was so much struggle with everybody, you know, the learning curve was so difficult that the Angular 2, the, the newer version resources that, that came out were so nice. So you were actually you jumped into it at the perfect time because that really I think the whole just learning Angular JS and then having to learn relearn the new stuff was difficult for a lot of people. But jumping right. in at Angular two was, you did the right thing, Danny. That was that <laughs> was you. perfect timing. It was pure luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. What is your favorite thing? What do you like working on? What is there? Is there anything that like you really just get like a kid, like you get excited about? It's fun for you. Well, whenever it involves building some kind of business. Um, so I think whenever I understand the people behind, you know, the, the people that's going to benefit from the project I'm, I'm developing, that's where I get excited. That's where I find most of the motivation to, uh, to develop, basically. I mean, and especially other people as well, but also from my own perspective, when I can see the benefit of this and then, wow, if I can make something work for me and it's beneficial to me and it'll help others, I get really excited. I can understand that. Yeah, me too. Okay, uh, here's the flip side. What do you struggle with? Is there anything that you just don't like or you're not good at or what is it that, that you uh, have a hard time with? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but it's quite serious actually. It's, I've, I've struggled with almost everything getting to learn and get my head around the the concepts and trying to understand it. And I'm always looking at other people understanding it. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I got to be so stupid not to understand this stuff. So I, I pretty much struggle with everything, I think. But the, on the other side, you know, it's very exciting once it flips in my mind and, and I, I kind of get it. To me, it's actually very helpful, the slides you do in the architecture course with, um, with the visualization. So whenever I am able to see something visually, that helps me a lot. Just reading text for me is, is, is more difficult to understand. You know, this is really interesting because uh, you haven't had a lot of opportunity to talk to Samantha, but this actually all came from Samantha because I was doing Angular for years and she was in high school and she started consulting with me. And at first she was doing HTML and CSS and she was just a junior developer and she was rocking it. She was very good at it. She learned so fast. And then when she started getting, she was advancing because she was doing so well with the HTML and C CSS that we started promoting her and we gave her more Angular stuff to do. And she was really struggling with the Angular stuff, which, and I was getting so frustrated because I was like, the last project you worked on, you did such a great job and now you're making all these mistakes. What's going on? And I was getting really frustrated with her and I was teaching, I mean, I'm a GDE, I'm her mom, right? I'm teaching her everything. 
Um, but she was still making mistakes because well, we, what we found, and it took us a while, we actually had some a couple of meltdowns along the way before we figured this out because she's dyslexic. And I didn't know that when I was teaching her. So I had VS Code open and I'm like opening all these files going, look, see this, this. And she just saw VS Code is like very confusing and it's hard for her to learn that. And so for me, I'm pointing at all the code on the screen going, look how easy this is. See, this looks just like this. And she's just seeing a whole screen full of letters. And so really that journey with her, um, the, when we understood, we started learning about dyslexia and we started learning about how she, how the dyslexic mind learns. And, and that actually was really empowering for her because she actually needs those pictures. And, and I'm not dyslexic, but I also found, especially when I was learning RxJS and NGRX. And at that time, like a couple of years ago, like I didn't even know the difference between the two. Like, why are they all using these letters? And I don't even know what's going on. And are they the same thing? Does like one build on the other? I didn't even understand what's the difference. And, and it was hard for me to understand it. I was watching these conference talks and sometimes like I watch people talking or I read articles and I'm like, ah, I don't know what they're talking about. And I feel stupid. But then sometimes in my, at least in my experience, I see another teacher teaching the same thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I understand it. And it's usually a diagram that I can see what's going on under the hood. So this is really, I didn't understand this. I didn't understand how important the the diagrams were until I really went through that whole experience with Samantha. And it really changed entirely the way that I teach. Uh, and that's also why I have Samantha with me because I do all of the code and stuff and she's doing all of the graphics and visualizations. And it's just really good because what she found with her research was that even the people who are not dyslexic still benefit from those visuals. So mm -hmm. yeah, so everything that we teach is very, very visual for that reason, because and even the complicated stuff, you know, is like some of that stuff is so abstract, and it's hard to understand and visualize what's going on under the hood. So that's just a total I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent, but it was really interesting, because uh, the learning visual is such a big part of our journey and Samantha's journey. And uh, you should talk to her more about that, because she's it's it's really she has she's done a couple of conference talks. I'll send you links. It's really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. sure. Absolutely. No, okay, I, I think it was a podcast I heard about uh, the pipe, you know, and because I, I was that's one of the things I was struggling with understanding the RxJS entirely, you know, and then the, this pipe thing came out. And then I think it was a podcast, maybe have been uh, Angular Air, and somebody on there said, "Well, it's it's a pipe," and I was like, "Ah, <laughs> it's it's a pipe." So you put things in the pipe, and then I just it clicked, you know, I just got it. So sometimes it, it the visuals are obviously the most helpful, but sometimes if it's even spoken in a visual language, it's incredibly helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, we are actually working on a, a more courses, and they are all going to be visual like that. So. Uh... We're doing this for you. It's going to be awesome. great Thank for you, you and anyone else who learns visually and that all of our courses will always be like that because mm. I think it's, I, I'm such a better teacher with her helping me with that stuff. And I, I explain it to her and she's a junior developer. So even explaining advanced concepts until it makes sense to Samantha and then she will make it visual because I don't, I can't do that. So the two of us working together has been really, really fun. Uh, plus she's a hoot. So yeah, sometimes she makes things blow up and burn and it's, it's just fun. I like it a lot. <laughs> You're doing okay, a great so, job. huh? You're doing a great job together. Thank you so much. That's yeah. so good to hear. We're having a lot of fun together. Okay, let's get back to the, your interview because uh, we went off on a tangent, but that was such a good. Uh, that's so interesting. That's why you guys, because I, I really feel like you and Samantha got along just from day one. So uh, that that explains a lot. You guys are like peas in a pod. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, next question. Uh, so in this one, we kind of switch depending on if you're looking for a job, but you're not you have a great job that you're happy at, right? Yes, I have. That's awesome. Well, you could say I have several I have a business. So or multiple. do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, um, I started out several years ago as an IT manager, because I, I decided I didn't want to code professionally, actually, because I loved it too much. When I was when I was younger, so I didn't want to ruin it by doing it professionally. I wanted to keep it as a, a hobby and something I could continue to love, actually. So for about 10, 10 12 years, I was working as an, uh, as an IT manager, working with networks. And, um, and then I, I, I decided that I wanted more freedom in my life. So I, during, while that period, I actually built an online business that I could live off of. So I decided to spend more time with the family. 
And then I decided to do more coding again. So I started a couple of businesses with coding. I was working for accountants. So I develop a lot of accounting software. So I have uh, two businesses doing that. And then I still run some of the online businesses as well. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's going well, huh? And yeah, your, your, your clients are happy with the stuff that you're building. They are happy and I'm happy. And I think that's the most important thing that I can wake up every day and love my life. That's uh, how I measure it. I just came out of a cancer treatment in February and wow. is fully recovered and everything like that. And that makes you also think. And I, I got to say, I have no regrets about how I, I've, I've lived the, the past 10 years, which is, uh, you know, that's success for me that I can say, I like having the time with my family while doing what I love. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's it. That's beautiful. Uh, and it's a perfect segue into our next question. Uh, how do you define job satisfaction? What is it that makes you, what is it that, that makes you feel fulfilled in your job? Money, yeah. glory, fame? <laughs> mm. Well, I think it's a feeling of uh, making a difference. If I feel what I'm doing is significant every day when I wake up and I think this is, this is good and important stuff to do. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I want to feel every day. <laughs> Even on the days I feel like not doing it, if it feels significant, that's the most important thing for me. I think we all want our jobs to feel meaningful, you know, like this actually makes a difference. I, th I think you're right about the clients because sometimes I work with end users and I'm like making something that actually improves their life and I see them get happy and it just, it just, it's very heartwarming. Yep. I agree. Okay. Uh, last question. What are you working on now? What's, what, what's, what's in Danny's future? <laughs> well, I, I'm working on a, an accounting software that I'm building for an accounting company. And uh, that is probably going to be a joint venture later on. So it's going to be a separate business for itself. Right now, it's, it's in development. Then I have an online platform for uh, accountants clients as well, which I'm uh, with, with two other guys I'm developing. That's actually in Laravel and Vue that we built that because that was their choice. That is what they wanted, which is, which is great. Um, so that's, uh, that's a project that is business-wise developing. And then I have a platform for online uh, business owners that I'm developing as well. So that's that's, awesome. that's the main project. And then a couple of fun things as well. <laughs> well, tell us about the fun things. I'm doing a, a, a project called Perspectify because I have so many task lists and, and things like this. And I need a place where I can get an overview of everything. And also on an emotional level where I can see how do I feel about that stuff before I dive into actual tasks. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a way of uh, getting a full overview of my life, I guess you could say, together and see how are the projects working out. Even with family and stuff like that, I have in there as well. So I have an wow. overview and I can immediately see, you know, where do I need to do something? Are you going to share this? Well, I would beta test that. Yeah, if I'd you need a beta learn, tester. I, I beta test myself, and I have one friend who is beta testing it. And then, uh, yeah, so it's it's Put a word. Coach, I will. If you want another beta tester, I would beta test that. That sounds very cool. I would like to check Thank that you. out. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I've only known you for about a month, but I think you're really cool, and it's been a lot of fun getting to know you in uh, Angular Nation. And don't forget, we've got these Friday things uh, every Friday we together. So hopefully, we'll be seeing you even after the course ends. This is the last week of our course, but we have more courses coming out, and also. We will be seeing you uh, hopefully in community hangouts. I would like to see you more. Like I would like to see you doing meetups. I would like to see you more in the Angular community because I think you're cool. And I think the Angular community needs more cool, open, friendly, helpful people. And uh, so hopefully this is just the beginning for you in the Angular community. Thanks. I hope so too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for doing this interview. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, it was a pleasure. See you soon. Bye. Bye.